Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Patricia, located in the Chicago area, and I help people with their ascension. And yes, that means your chakras, your light body, detoxing, and much higher love. So let's get into it. Today, I want to pose a question here. Do you have synchronicities with a person? What are synchronicities? Well, they can be things that match up. They can be things that happen simultaneously. They can be things that you notice at the same time as you notice something else. It could be where your eyes see things all the time. You look and you see, for example, numbers or you see something significant, which is like a catchphrase. Or you go somewhere and you always hear the same music. Now, there's a part of you that inside is saying, hey, does this have some significance? What is the meaning of this? Now, that can happen by yourself. What if you have synchronicities with a person? That can happen. You find that you have the same tastes in things. You might say something at the same time and you both go, jinx, okay? That can be a synchronicity where things just seem to line up and it's synchronous. It's in sync. You can have things that you get along with, things in common, things that might boggle your mind where you say, wow, at the same time I was doing this, that person was doing the same exact thing. They were graduating at the same time as me. Or they were looking for a house at the same time as me. Or we have the same kind of vehicle. Or we visited the same place at the same time. What is the meaning of this? Well, one thing to be aware of is there are what you might call soul groups. There are groups of people that can sometimes be from the same background, the same ethnicity, sometimes similar experiences. Like they grew up in the same city, their schools were the same, families were the same, same set of rules, same set of uh, social interactions, and it's relatable. So sometimes what synchronicities are, are the same things that are relatable to a group of people or even a larger group of people because you can find that with immigrants. Even though immigrants pick up and move to a different country, they keep a lot of the same customs and they will find that, you know, years later, their children find these synchronicities between people from here, people from here, but it's the same basic foundation. What about the synchronicities of the mind? That is where it gets into some deep stuff. And that's where it gets into the past because you have a very ancient system that's part of your paleo mammalian brain. It's not the lizard brain, it's not the reptilian brain. It is a very ancient part of the mammal brain and it's parts of us that have helped to get along, make families with each other. When you bring that forward into modern times, it includes things such as, how would you get along if you have a child? How would you get along about money? How would you get along about, uh, let's say a topic like discipline within the family? How would you handle things in regards to other aspects of your upbringing, such as religion or um, how you treat the elders in your family, what you eat, where you go on vacation, what people you interact with? These are things that are simply mental connections. What if you have synchronicities with a person and this is a person you're seeing and it just feels so lovely and you're saying, wow, we have the same taste in furniture. We have the same taste in decor. We like some of the same cuisine. This is really fun. We have similar tastes in music. 
we tell similar jokes, we're getting each other. This is a lot of fun. I am finding so much value in these things that line up. What does it mean though? Where is this going? And that right there, when someone starts to say to themselves, where is this going? Bingo. Where do you want it to go? Is it supposed to go somewhere? Is it just someone from the same group? It's like that film. If you ever saw this film called My Big Fat Greek Wedding, there is a part in the beginning where she's sort of laying the groundwork of her backstory, who she is, where she's coming from, and the story, which is the basis of the film, that she's Greek. Her whole family is Greek. She has lots of cousins because there's a big family there. There are expectations of her. She is expected as a Greek woman to marry a nice Greek boy, not a bad Greek boy, a nice Greek boy, and have more Greek babies. Why? Probably because that area was invaded a lot and there were a lot of wars and there you needed to repopulate. Okay, so that's part of the foundation. We're repopulating areas. There were earthquakes, demolish areas of the actual land. There were people lost at sea. You have to repopulate. So this is one of the driving forces of these synchronicities is not necessarily we love each other so much. It is we better get together and make more babies. We have to get together and make a stronger ethnicity or background. Now that's just one on the entire planet. This has happened all over the planet. Now you bring that into modern times and this is where you find that people really don't know where they fit in their box or should they even be in a box because we are deconstructing some of this stuff. What if you have synchronicities with a person but the person is toxic. What do you do? Can you do anything? Can you help them? Should you help them? What if their toxic behaviors affect you? Because not everybody who's toxic stays and abuses someone. People who are toxic sometimes disappear. They escape to go be in their own toxicity. They do not want to affect people. They consider it that they are doing everyone a favor by just bowing out, getting lost, literally, leaving, escaping. What do you do with the energy of escapism and you are affected by it? What if that person comes around every time there's a crisis? What if they have their hand out and they're looking for money from you? Ooh, this gets deep. So where do those synchronicities come into play if you start having all of this toxic stuff begin to happen is it worth it is it worth your sense of well-being your mental health your emotional health to deal with toxic stuff at what point do you consider it a mirror to quote deal with it you know, do you turn, do you take everything on and then not only become an empath, does it make you neurotic? Do you start reading into so much stuff that you're actually having a neurological condition as a result of it? Think about that because you've gone from synchronous things to now the emotions are up and down. And is that really what God intends for you? So what if you meet a person that has all these synchronicities? Are you able to break this down? Are you able to deconstruct it? Are you able to simply find out what this is and get away? Now, that is a part of the work that I do because as we um, grow and expand and as we are evolving, what is supposed to happen is a level of maturity that helps you discern and helps you to decide, make a decision that this does not equal that. 
Tolerating behavior only makes you an enabler. Tolerating someone's addictions makes you an enabler. Tolerating someone's immature behaviors makes you their mama or papa. Is that what you're really here for? So are you sitting around saying, well, where's mine? You know, like we got along. Now I have had this happen to me personally. And it was actually with my ex-husband, but it was also with some other people. You get along. And I'm using these examples because they were real life examples for me. You enjoy watching a sport together. You enjoy the same food. You do enjoy some intimacy. You have great pillow talk. You enjoy being together. You enjoy going places, just getting in the car and just going on a mini road trip. You enjoy just taking a ride together. You like to browse and pick out things and find you have the same tastes in things. You find that a lot of things are very agreeable and it convinces you that somehow you're very much alike. You have met a kindred spirit. You have some things in common. Now that is also a good basis for a good friendship. When it's a lover relationship, when that stuff doesn't last, and this is one of the telltale signs, if you have never had a relationship like that, you're probably due for one where you can actually have some enjoyment and really grow in a relationship and see what it's like. Okay, be nurtured, be cared for, have fun, even if it's for a short amount of time. For people that have gone through an awakening process where they feel it in their body, they feel some kind of energy rise up and their energies are like, whoa, you know, I'm so much more heightened now. My senses are heightened. I'm becoming aware of nuances. My gifts and abilities are open. If you do not have your gifts and abilities open so that you can expand your discernment, it's time to work with me. That is what happens because that is what love does. But that's only one of the things, one of the, let's say, percentages of what love is able to do. If you linger in a toxic relationship, that toxic stuff will pull you under the waves. You're going to go down like you're sinking on the Titanic. And that person will be the death of you. Sometimes literally, because sometimes the drama gets to be too much. So do synchronicities equal a great relationship? That's one of the things I'm able to help you with. So if you are interested in a one-on-one -on -one one-on-one -on -one consultation or coaching to help you with that discernment to see, should you waste time, energy, money, effort, any more in that direction? There's a very short answer to that. Do it for you. Do it for you so that you're sensible because maybe you just can't afford another toxic thing to happen in your life because Toxic stuff, drama, drama does not equal passion, nor does it mean that someone is going to give you their undying pledges of devotion. That is one of the key differences. Are you involved with someone who has addictions? And mind you, addictions are not always things like heroin. They can be other things as well. And the bottom line is unhealthiness. Synchronicities have to be real and true. They can't be made up by the mind. You can't be delusional about it. You can't delude yourself where you're saying, well, I saw this number and therefore that equals that. Don't go by the lists out there. You have to go by something else. And that is your actual heart. And hurt means your emotional quotient. 
expand your emotional quotient. You will find that it serves you well. There is a way to do that. There's a way to actually expand. That is what I teach because it's time for a whole new level of this stuff. Everybody knows the games, but they don't want to be played with. Who wants to be played with and toyed with? Do you actually have time for that? I don't think so. So check it out. Look for the links below. My work is available at twinflamesmerge.com or email me. Thank you. Bye.